In this video, we are going to talk about vertical and horizontal stretches and shrinks. Now, both of these involve multiplying the original function by a number. Either you're going to multiply by a number outside of the function, or you're going to multiply a number by a number inside with the variable x. So here's where we multiply outside, the number outside. Here's where we multiply the number inside. So we're going to look at some of our original parent functions and see what happens when we multiply by a number. And so I'm going to start off with the absolute value function, which is v-shaped. And I want to take this function and I want to multiply it by 2 on the outside. I just want to start with multiplying by a number on the outside. So what happens when we multiply by 2 on the outside? So the red graph is the original parent function, and the blue graph is what we get for multiplying by 2. Now, when we talk about multiplying a number on the outside, we have to talk about it in terms of either a vertical stretch or a vertical shrink. And so vertical, you have to think about taking the ends of this graph, and in this case, you will pull the ends of the graph up because the graph actually got skinnier. And so we would call that a vertical stretch since you have to pull the graph, the ends of the graphs up. So now let's look at also, let's look at x squared, the squaring graph. What happens when you multiply this one by a number? So this is f of x equal x squared. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to multiply it by 3. So f of x equal 3 times x to the second power. And so the lighter red graph is the original parent function. And the dark red graph is what we get when we multiply by 3. Again, you can see that the graph got skinnier. And since it's multiplied on the outside, we have to talk about it in terms of a vertical stretch or shrink. So think of vertically taking the ends of the original parent function and pulling it up. You have to pull it up to get that graph, which is a vertical stretch. So if you multiply on the outside by a number, and if that number is bigger than 1, so if A is greater than 1, then you can say you get a vertical stretch. What happens if A is not bigger than 1? If A is not bigger than 1, it will have to be less than 1. So let's go back to the apps. No, let's stay with this one. Let's take the x squared function and let's multiply by, let's say, 1 third. So you get f of x equal 1 divided by 3 times x to the second power. And now that is the blue graph. So this this middle graph here is the parent function, and the blue graph is the new graph of multiplying it by one third. So now you can see that the graph actually got wider. And so now when you talk about it getting wider, now in order to get from the parent function to that function, you will have to take the ends of that graph and push it down in order to make it equal to out to the blue graph. And so in this case, that will be considered a vertical shrink. Alrighty, so let's look at the absolute value function and see if that same thing happens. So if we take the absolute value function, a while ago we multiplied it by 2. So this time, let's multiply it by 1 half. So we're going to do 1 divided by 2 times the absolute value of x. And so now you can see the lighter red is the parent function and the darker red is the new graph of multiplying it by 1 half. And the graph actually got wider, which if you have to talk about it in terms of a vertical stretch or shrink, that would be considered a vertical shrink because you have to take the ends of the graph and actually push it down in order to make it equal that darker red graph. And so if you multiply by something that is less than 1, then you end up getting a vertical shrink. All right, in the case of the vertical stretch, the, gra gra the graph got skinnier, but in the case of the vertical shrink, the graph got wider. And so this is what happens when you multiply on the outside by a number. And I'm going to make this smaller so we can see it all on the same screen. So now let's look and see what happens when you multiply by a number on the inside. So we're going to go, we're going to stick with the same function, the absolute value function. But this time, instead of multiplying it by 2 on the outside, we're going to multiply it by 2 on the inside. And so look and let's see what happens. So when I multiply by 2, on the inside, the graph got skinnier. So uh, the same thing happened when I multiplied it by 2 on the outside. It got skinnier as well. So let's also look at the squaring function and see if the same thing, not the square root, the squaring function, and see if the same thing happens. So we're going to take this one and we're going to multiply it by 2 on the inside, so 2x. 
to the second column. So the lighter red graph is the parent function and the darker red is the new function by multiplying it by two on the outside. And the same thing happened, the graph got skinnier. But whenever you multiply a number on the inside with the X, you have to talk about the transformation in terms of a horizontal stretch or shrink. And in this case, if you had to move horizontally, you would push the graph in. And so this would be considered a horizontal shrink. So in this case, whenever your A is greater than 1, you would get a horizontal shrink. The same thing is happening to the graph. It is getting skinnier. But when you have to talk about it in terms of horizontal, a horizontal stretch or shrink, that's considered a horizontal shrink. And so let me just make this a little smaller. Alrighty, so then you can kind of guess what will probably happen when we multiply on the inside by a number less than 1. So let's take the squaring function and multiply by 1 half on the inside. And so now, look what happened. The lighter red is the parent function. The darker red is the new function. And it actually got wider. And so when it gets wider, you will have to take the graph, the original parent function graph, and you will have to pull it out horizontally in order to make it be that dark red graph. And so that would be considered a horizontal stretch. So let me go back to the absolute value function. and Multiply it by... So f of x equals the absolute value. This time I'm going to multiply by 1 half inside with the x. And you can see the same thing happens. The red function is the parent function. The blue function is the new graph. It actually gets wider. So if you take the red graph, you have to pull it out horizontally to make it equal the blue graph. So whenever you multiply on the inside by a number that is less than 1, you end up with a horizontal stretch, and the graph actually gets wider. So in both cases, if you multiply by a number that's greater than 1, the graph actually gets skinnier. If you multiply by a number that's less than 1, but greater than 0, so between 0 and 1, let me add that, then you get um, a vertical, or you get a graph that becomes wider, whether the number is outside or inside with the x. However, depending on where the number is will depend on how you talk about it. If the number is on the outside, you'll talk about it or discuss it as a vertical stretch or shrink. If the number is on the inside, you'll discuss it as a horizontal stretch or shrink. If it's vertical, it does exactly what you think it's going to do. So if it's outside, that will be vertical. If it's bigger than one, it stretches. If it's outside and it's less than one, then it shrinks. But if it's inside, it does the opposite of what you think it's going to do. So if it's inside, the number is bigger than one. Instead of stretching, it's going to shrink horizontally. And if it's inside and it's less than 1, instead of shrinking, it's actually going to stretch horizontally. So hopefully this makes sense. Um, but basically what you're doing is either making the graph wider or skinnier. These are your vertical and horizontal stretches and shrinks. If you have any questions, make sure you include them in the comments below. If not, make sure you understand all the different transformations because you need to know these not only for college algebra and algebra, but you have to understand these for trig, and you'll use them in pre-cal as well and in calculus also. So make sure you have a good understanding of these. So thanks for listening.